First Sergeant. Yes, Chief. Please inform all in attendance the importance of this ceremony and any restrictions that may apply and begin the induction ceremony. General Clark, distinguished guests and fellow members, the Air National Guard, Order of the Sword, will soon be called to order. There is no higher honor which can be bestowed upon any individual by the enlisted members of an organization than that of being singled out as worthy for induction into the Order of the Sword. There is one worthy of that honor here with us this evening. For those of us fortunate enough to be here tonight, our honor is to have had the opportunity to serve with that individual and to be physically present to witness this prestigious ceremony. Tonight's ceremony will be presented by our enlisted field advisory council as a symbol of the representation of more than 91,000 enlisted members from the 50 states, the District of Columbia, and our three territories, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Virgin Islands. During the ceremony, the ballroom is closed. No one may enter or exit except as directed by the Chief Master Sergeant of the Mess, myself, or in the event of a personal emergency. Photographs are permitted, but please do not disrupt the official recording of the ceremony. Toasting is a vital and historic part of this ceremony, and everyone is required to participate. If you desire, you may toast with water instead of wine. Chief Master Sergeant of the Mess, all have been informed of the importance of the ceremony and the restrictions that apply. Thank you, First Sergeant. Do you have any further introductions? Yes, Chief. Let me take a moment to recognize our distinguished guests here tonight, starting with our honoree, Lieutenant General Stanley E. Clark III's personal guests. His daughter, Casey Clark. His daughter, Kelly Reynolds, and her spouse, Airman First Class Jake Reynolds. His father-in-law, Colonel Retired Mike Weaver. The Adjutant General of the State of Alabama, Major General Perry Smith. The Commander, 187th Fighter Wing, Colonel Randy Epperson and his wife, Melody. The Vice Commander, 187th Fighter Wing, Colonel Will Sparrow and his wife, Melanie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our former Air National Guard senior enlisted leaders, and Command Chief Master Sergeants of the Air National Guard. The Senior Enlisted Leader of the Air National Guard, number four, Chief Master Sergeant Richard Green. The Senior Enlisted Leader of the Air National Guard, number six, Chief Master Sergeant Ed Brown. The Senior Enlisted Leader of the Air National Guard, number seven, Chief Master Sergeant Gary Broadbent. And the Command Chief of the Air National Guard, number nine, Chief Master Sergeant Richard Smith. And finally, our honored guest, Director of the Air National Guard, Lieutenant General Stanley E. Clark III and his wife, Rebecca. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in one last round of applause for our distinguished guests. Is that all, First Sergeant? Yes, Chief. May I proceed? Yes, First Sergeant, you may proceed with the induction. Guardian of the Sword.
Yes, First Sergeant. Is the ceremonial sword ready? Yes, sir. The sword is ready. Post the sword. Post the sword. The Order of the Sword is the highest honor and tribute that the non-commissioned officer corps of the United States Air Force can convey to an individual in recognition of extraordinary service to the military and the United States of America. Sword detail. Dismissed. Let all present be advised that the Guardians of the Sword have sanctioned this induction with the presence of the Air National Guard Ceremonial Sword. Duty Sergeant, are you ready? Yes, First Sergeant, I'm ready. Chief Master Sergeant of the Mess, the Mess is assembled and ready to proceed. This ceremony is now called to order. It is my privilege to welcome each of you to this historic event tonight out of respect and admiration to our honoree, Lieutenant General Stanley E. Clark III. At this time, I will ask all command chiefs, senior enlisted leaders, and all former senior enlisted leader and command chief master sergeants of the Air National Guard to please stand. General Clark, these command chief master sergeants present all represent the Air National Guard enlisted men and women. It was them wanting to honor your leadership and your support for the entire enlisted corps who voted you in for the induction of our great Air National Guard Order of the Sword. Chiefs, thank you. Please be seated.
First Sergeant, you may begin. Duty Sergeant. Yes, First Sergeant. Please state the purpose of this occasion. First Sergeant and distinguished guests of the mess, the purpose of this occasion is to award the highest honor and tribute that the enlisted corps can bestow upon a leader. Tonight, we formally induct Lieutenant General Stanley E. Clark III into the Air National Guard Order of the Sword. Do you have the record? Yes, First Sergeant, we have the record. Very well, please proceed. General Clark, Director Air National Guard is responsible for formulating, developing, and coordinating all policies, plans, and programs affecting more than 105,000 Air National Guard members and civilians in 90 wings and 200 geographically separated units across 213 locations throughout the 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Virgin Islands. General Clark was commissioned in 1981 as a distinguished graduate of the Reserve Officer Training Corps program at the University of Georgia and graduated from under pilot, undergraduate pilot training at Shepard Air Force Base, Texas in 1983. He is a command pilot with more than 4,000 hours in the A-10, C-26, and the F-16. Before assuming his current position, General Clark served as a commander Continental U.S. North American Air Aerospace Defense Command, Region 1st Air Force, Air Forces Northern, Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida. His command comprised of four direct reporting units, 14 aligned Air National Guard units, and a large number of active air defense alert sites, including aircraft, air defense artillery, and up to 15,000 active duty National Guard, Air Force Reserve, and civilian personnel. The General has served in various operational and staff assignments, including Senior Defense Official and Defense Asset Attaché in Turkey. He has commanded a squadron, a fighter wing, and an Air Expeditionary Wing. He previously serves as the Director of the Air National Guard and is the Assistant Engineer General for Air, Alabama Air National Guard. The General's assignments included tours at Myrtle Beach Air Force Base, South Carolina, Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma, Danley Field, Montgomery, Alabama, Headquarters, Alabama Air National Guard, Montgomery, Alabama, Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida, Headquarters Air Force, the Pentagon, Washington, District of Columbia. His major awards and decorations include the Distinguished Service Medal, the Defense Superior Service Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, Legion of Merit with Oak Leaf Cluster, Bronze Star Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, Air Medal, Aerial Achievement Medal, Joint Service Combination Medal, Air Force Combination Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, Air Force Achievement Medal, Joint Meritorious Unit Award, Air Force Outstanding Unit with V Valor Device and Silver Oak Leaf Cluster, Combat Readiness Medal with two Silver Oak Leaf Clusters, National Defense Service Medal with Bronze Star, Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, Southwest Asia Service Medal with Bronze Star, Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, and the Air Force Expeditionary Service Ribbon with Gold Border. Other notable achievements, he was Distinguished Graduate of his Reserve Officer Training Corps and a Distinguished Graduate of his Fighter Weapons School. He holds multiple civilian pilot ratings, including Airline Transport Pilot and Deputy Chief of Staff for IPT-2 2005 Quadrennial Defense Review Proclamation. Duty Sergeant, do you wish to make the proclamation? Yes, First Sergeant, I do. Sergeant at Arms, report.
Duty Sergeant, please read the proclamation. Whereas this proclamation is issued by the enlisted men and women of the Air National Guard proclaiming you, Lieutenant General Stanley E. Clark III, leader among leaders, who has established new standards of excellence and vision for our future while serving as a director, Air National Guard. And whereas your inspirational and dynamic leadership, your compassion for the enlisted corps of the units for which you have commanded, and your sincere concern for the highest standards of personal integrity have strengthened the spirit and resolve of airmen. And whereas your personal and professional dignity pride in the uniform you wear, and devotion to achieving a, a superior force are in the very finest traditions and have inspired your enlisted corps to set and maintain the highest goals for performance. And whereas, under your outstanding leadership, the Air National Guard has undertaken new and vital roles in the defense of the United States of America. Now, therefore, we, the council members of the Order of the Sword, Air National Guard, with deepest gratitude and heartfelt admiration, do proudly and humbly affix our signatures to this proclamation. We offer these words to you as a lasting tribute to your dedication and loyalty to our great nation with the following. Though monuments, trophies, and awards of metal and stone must, must eventually crumble and fall, the bond you welded with your enlisted men and women will live on forever in their hearts and minds. In witness thereof, we here unto cause our hand to be set to this proclamation, signed here in Montgomery, Alabama, the 17th day of April, in the year of our Lord, 2016. Sergeant at Arms, make the presentation. Representing the Enlisted Field Advisory Council, Region 5, and the states of Arkansas, Kansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Texas, the State Command Chief Master Sergeant of Nebraska, Chief Master Sergeant Mark Forrester. Duty Sergeant, is there a citation? Yes, First Sergeant, there is. Duty Sergeant, read the citation. The enlisted men and women of the Air National Guard present the Order of the Sword to Lieutenant General Stanley E. Clark III in recognition of his unparalleled interest in support of and guidance to the enlisted corps while serving as director of the Air National Guard. This award shall serve as notice to the enlisted men and women of the United States Air Force that he has been accepted with due honor and ceremony, given at Montgomery, Alabama, the 17th day of April, in the year of our Lord, 2016. Sergeant at Arms, make the presentation.
representing the Enlisted Field Advisory Council, Region 4, and the states of Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. The State Command Chief Master Sergeant of Minnesota, Chief Master Sergeant Gary Luke. Duty Sergeant, is there an award to accompany the citation? Yes, First Sergeant, there is. Sergeant at Arms, make the presentation. Representing the Enlisted Field Advisory Council, Region 1, and the states of Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont. The Wing Command Chief Master Sergeant of the 158th Fighter Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Brian Marchessault. I am happy to announce that the enlisted men and women of the Air National Guard have elected to bestow their highest award on Lieutenant General Stanley E. Clark III and offer congratulations to the newest member of the Air National Guard Order of the Sword. General Clark, this is your personal sword. It is a symbol of truth, justice, and power rightfully used. It is displayed on a field of red, the traditional color of the non-commissioned officer corps. This sword and its heraldry are fitting of representation to you, a leader among leaders. Sergeant at Arms, have the scroll brought forward. Representing the Enlisted Field Advisory Council Region 3 and the states of Alabama, Florida, 
Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and the territories of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. The State Command Chief Master Sergeant of North Carolina, Chief Master Sergeant Maurice Williams. Sir, a final memento, a scroll upon which every airman here tonight has affixed their signatures. By signing the scroll, we attest our firm belief in you, an outstanding military leader. For Sergeant, do we have a presentation for Mrs. Clark? Yes, Chief, we do. Make the presentation. Representing the 161st Air Refueling Wing, Arizona, the Wing Command Chief Master Sergeant, Chief Master Sergeant Martha Garcia. Mrs. Clark, on behalf of all enlisted men and women of the Air National Guard, we are so proud to make this presentation. We sincerely thank you for your unwavering support. Please accept this Minuteman necklace from our family to yours. Sergeant at Arms, you are dismissed. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Charge your glasses. Duty Sergeant, a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to the flag of the United States. To the, to colors. the colors. Duty Sergeant, a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to our Commander-in-Chief, 
the President of the United States of America. To the President. The President. Duty Sergeant, a toast. A toast to the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force. To the, to chief. the chief. Duty Sergeant, a toast. A toast to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. To the, the chief. chief. Duty Sergeant, a toast. A toast to the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. To the, the chief, chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Duty Sergeant, a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to our honoree, the Director of the Air National Guard. To the director. the director. Duty Sergeant, a toast. We toast our hardy comrades who have fallen from the skies and who were gently caught by God's own, ha own hands to be with him on high. To dwell among the soaring clouds they have known so well before, from, before victory from tail chase. At heaven's very door, and as we fly among them, we are sure to hear their plea, take care of my friend, watch your six, and do one more role for me. To our comrades killed in action, missing in action, or prisoners of war, please join me in raising your glass in a silent toast. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. First Sergeant, has the duty sergeant completed all responsibilities for this induction? Yes, Chief, he has. Duty Sergeant, you are dismissed. Chief, the floor is yours. Is everybody having a good time tonight? Yeah. It's quite an honor to be next to you again, sir. Uh, I've already missed it. It's been a month, and uh, it feels like forever. And it uh, it's definitely feels like home uh, when I'm talking to you and Mrs. Clark again. And on behalf of all the enlisted force, we are honored to have you in our presence again. I took some time this afternoon after I met with you, and I wrote just a few notes that I wanted to share with you. And I have something special to share with the audience. So, you know, to lead at a time of historic change, it takes bold leadership, it takes courage. It takes trust. These are the same enduring values that the enlisted corps, the warrior class of our nation, has seeked in their leaders since the beginning of the ancient order of the sword, dating back all the way to the Middle Ages. Just like fire forges steel, it's like the sword that you see in front of us today. Character is also forged. Character is built well before assuming a position such as director of the Air National Guard. Those of us who live in the warrior class, whether you're an officer or enlisted, know that it is character that counts. I want to share with all of you tonight an example of character right now. It's a story of two airmen who did not know each other but shared in the same warrior ethos. It's about airmanship, both in the air and on the ground. It's a story about caring for all of those around them, even though you don't know them personally. It's about a wingman, a leader, and a warrior. It's about fate and destiny, and how it began so many years ago.
Sir, we didn't know each other then. We had no idea. We had no idea that fate and destiny so many years later would place us right here, right now. But what we did care about was taking care of other people. And that is you. It's all about taking care of airmen, the 91,000 enlisted members of your Air National Guard. That the intensity that you had for fighting a war, you took forward, built out of that character, and you took it to the Pentagon as a three-star general, earned, earned that position. And for the three years that you held that position, you fought for us, just like you fought on the battlefields. And these are the things that make you earn something that goes back to 1500. In the medieval times, when how can we express to you our gratitude for what you did? All we can simply do is present you with a sword and say, job well done. And for everybody in the audience, some of the examples that just always come to mind about, did he earn it? You're darn right he did. That early on, I had the privilege to witness one of the greatest courage and leadership moments that I've ever seen. And it wasn't on a battlefield. It was in the Pentagon. And it was when I came to the general and said, sir, we're hurting for the very fact that this ancillary training program is killing our airmen, that they have no time to train. He said, what do you want to do about it, chief? I said, we have to fix it. And I witnessed General Clark debate with the vice chief of staff of the Air Force for hours. And he literally put his three stars on the line for you, the enlisted corps of the Air National Guard, and said, we will not stand anymore for this, and we must make our airmen whole. And from that moment on, sir, I knew. I knew we had you. I knew that it was all in your heart for what you wanted for our airmen. You saw the importance when you were testifying in front of Congress with the Secretary of the Air Force, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, sitting side by side them and saying, Air National Guard is never to be treated like a second-class citizen, that we are one of three of the most important components of the entire United States Air Force, the one Air Force. And you saw through that. And you helped oversee the expansion of the Senior Enlisted Leader Management Office to where we took care of enlisted members. And you were the one that approved that action. We have historic numbers in professional military education. Why? Because you said go forward. You cared about our airmen. You gave the office of the command chief so much latitude that we were to operate in the battle space of the Pentagon to enhance enlisted issues, and that's all you cared about. And most importantly, and most significantly, the very last act that you performed as director of the Air National Guard, on the very last minute, you emailed me and said, Chief, I am going to improve the enlisted grades review as I turn the lights off and walk out of the Pentagon. That enlisted grades review repaired the enlisted force development pyramid. You made us whole again. You made us whole. You allowed every single airman now the ability to make senior master sergeant. And with that sole action, now every airman that you see out there can dream to be a chief. Sir, you did this for us. And the least that we can do for you is give you our order of the sword. It has been absolutely an honor and privilege to serve with you. I'm humbled to sit next to you. And we'd be honored to hear a few words from you. Do I get to use this? Thank you, thank you. Wow. Well, I know what it is to uh, feel like a rock star. Thank you for this. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I mean, I, I knew that the Order of the Sword was a big deal. Uh, it means a lot to the individual. It means a lot to the family of the individual. I think it means a lot to the airmen out there to be a part of this also. 
Uh, I wish all the airmen could see this somehow on a video or whatever, because there's some words that I have that I hope touch on that just a little bit. Before I get too far, too deep, I always tend to forget two things. One is to thank someone for putting this all together. Um, there, there were some call outs a while ago on, on the folks that did this. But you know, uh, one night doesn't reflect really how deep and extensive the planning, the execution to pull something like this off. I, I can only imagine how many hours went into this that Airmen uh, assembled energetic, busy uh, people, very well qualified to uh, do many other things and spend their time putting this together, and probably had other jobs also pulled this together. And I have to tell you, it's fantastic. And uh, I want to say thank you to all of you I'm not going to try to go through all the names again in organizations, but thank you uh, for, for making this happen. I also tend to forget my family. I don't know why, uh, because they are singularly important uh, to me, and I'm sure to all of you, your families, because when I look at you, I see you and I see all your families behind you. And when I testified in front of Congress, I saw the same thing. When I was talking about airmen, I was talking about all their families and their communities behind them when I was making remarks about how important it was to support the Air Force and the Air National Guard and the things that we do on behalf of the nation. And I think we were largely successful in that because I, I just spoke from the heart every time I talked to people there on the Hill. I just told them exactly how I felt about the Air National Guard. And I'll make some more comments about that, and I'm going to kind of go off of my remarks based on what you presented there, which was very well done, Jim, about the two airmen, one on the ground and one in the air, uh, unfortunately, I was not in the air as much as I wanted to be because I was back running the wing uh, from the, uh, the base that we had built, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but that was uh, very special, very touching. Thank you for putting that together. My family, of course, Rebecca's uh, sitting over here to my right, uh, always uh, my biggest supporter, sometimes my critic, uh, to make sure that I stay on track and do things right. Uh, in retirement, she's found a way to do that also. <laughs> but we're successful together in that sense. So, uh, love of my life, my friend, my soulmate. Thank you. <laughs> and my family members that are at the table, my daughters, uh, son-in-law, my father-in-law, and then I have good friends, and uh, Perry Smith, the Adjutant General, thank you for being here. Uh, the Colonel Efferson, and Melody, uh, Will, Melanie, thank you for being here. Uh, it's, it's just uh, an opportunity to have you here to be a part of this and share this with me. And I, it's so important that you uh, got the invitation and that you uh, accepted it and, and came tonight. I also want to make a call out to uh, Chief Lindsey McCall. I invited him. Some of you may know Chief McCall. He was my chief. Uh, one of the reasons I feel so strongly about the enlisted force is Chief McCall and I served together uh, he was probably a uh, tech sergeant and staff sergeant when I first met him, because I was a captain. And we grew up together in the 187th, right over here at Danley Field, deployed multiple times. You ask him to do something, did it every time, did it well. And he can handle any problem you threw at him. Uh, and he had that casual, uh, deep south, uh, let, me, let me do it my way, uh, Colonel, I can get it done. And he did it every time. Tragically, he had a family member killed night for last, and he was unable to be here tonight, but he would have joined us at the uh, uh, distinguished visitor table. But it's airmen like Lindsey McCall and all of you that uh, make this organization fantastic. January 2003, when those operations were, were starting to gear up in heat, General Mosley invited me over to Shaw Air Force Base, and he brought me into his office, and we had known each other before at Nellis, and he said, Sid, I want you to lead an organization that's going to defend a lot of the Middle East from missile attacks and possibly another invasion on the ground. And uh, we're going to have an expeditionary wing, and I want you to be the commander. All right, sir. I'm sure you've got plenty of active duty airmen that can do that, but if you think that highly of me, I'll, I'll, I'll take on the challenge. Uh, where do I get started? And he said, well, the staff's down the hall. You can start putting this together. Of course, they embellished what we were going to have and what we were going to do and all of this and things were going to be, you know, coming together. Not so much. We arrived in the desert. Uh, no place to stay, no tents, uh, 
no dining hall. In fact, the bear base concept is you get a runway, you get a fuel source, and you get a water source. The Air Force got one of those right. There was a runway there. That was it. Everything else from scratch had to be built up, started from, uh, and some of the airmen that are in this room tonight uh, were here with me when we, when we built that base. And I called General Mosley uh, after I'd been there about a week, and I said, sir, you know, logistically, this is busted. We don't have what we ha need. There's no electrical hookups. There's no enterprise to make this. There's nothing to reach into to make this come together. And he said, uh, are you say it's, it's just not going to happen? And I paused, and then I said, General Mosley, I said, I've got over 1,000 National Guard members here today. I said, because we're the National Guard, we're going to make this happen. We're going to build that city because I have engineers. I have electrical technicians. I have vehicle maintenance people. I have all of that do this in their civilian careers. I know they can pull this together and make it happen. But I want you to know that it's going to be a challenge. And he said, Sid, if it was easy, they'd call it bowling. <laughs> Truly, it was the National Guard that pulled that off. That whole wing that supported all the special operators on the ground and a lot of other things that we did was only because the National Guard was there to make it happen. Let me tell you this. The core of our organization, the broader Air Force, the active duty Air Force, the Secretary of the Air Force, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, on down through the major commands, is just a fabulous organization. What they do day in and day out is amazing across the globe. What they do and how they take airmen and uh, citizens and turn them into airmen is second to none. What we do is we take a unique culture called the National Guard and mix that inside of the Air Force. And I knew from my days as uh, an airman working in the desert, pulling things together that nobody else could done. Let me say that again. No one else could do what we did. And I'm not beating my chest. I'm just telling the facts here about the National Guard and how I feel about it. It came together because of the type of people we had, the deep training and deep experience we had, and the type of people that were very energetic, and they said, we won't fail. We will make this happen. And I knew that if I had all of that in my background, that one day when I was testifying in front of Congress, or I was holding meetings with senior leadership of the Air Force, I could hold my ground because I could back up my words and tell them about things that I've seen happen, the things that National Guard could do. But it's because of the people pull this together. Airplanes, buildings, budgets, and all that, they kind of take care of themselves. They, 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 they kind of manage themselves along. But the people make things go. And it's fantastic people like yourselves and the airmen that you have a chance to associate with and lead do so many wonderful things around the globe, around the globe, every day. Usually when I was the director, there was close to 6,000 airmen on orders all the time up to 3,000 daily deployed, doing things on behalf of the nation. And I never heard not one time where we failed, not one single time. Let me tell you, when you're director of the Air National Guard or the command chief, that's pretty big. I mean, it, it's a huge, to, it's a tremendous pump in your life every day to go in there and hear about how well your organization is performing. But you knew it was the people. Now. I think even Nick Saban, roll tide roll. I think Nick Saban would tell you that that football team that he has every year has a choice for the next year. Either you get better or you fall back. We in the Air National Guard have to get better than we are today. And whoever makes that better is gonna have to make it better the next time. Because your choice is to start to walk backwards from that. And I knew that the efforts that the chief identified just a minute ago, talking about all of the force development things, restructuring how we train, all of those things, that was a no-brainer to me every time. I just had to sell the programs. One thing about Washington it, it, in the Pentagon, it doesn't move very quickly. But when you go in there with some passion, energy, and back it up with the facts, you can usually sell it to the people. But I knew all of those things I was selling was going to work because the people inside the Air National Guard, we're going to make it happen. And all of you continue to support that legacy and hand this off, this torch, to the next group who's going to do it and do it better than you do it. Certainly better than I did it or Chief Hotelling did it. 
I feel very confident about that and very proud of that fact. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for this award. Thank you, Dan, sir. Be seated. Thank you. Guardian of the Sword, report. Chief, Guardian of the Sword reports. Retire the sword. Retire the sword. Guardian of the Sword, job well done. You are dismissed. Special thank you to our sword detail representing the Enlisted Field Advisory Council, Region 2 in the states of Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, and the District of Columbia, the State Command Chief Master Sergeant of Pennsylvania, Chief Vic Guerra, also representing the Enlisted Field Advisory Council. Region 7 and the states of Arizona, California, Colorado, Hawaii, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, and Guam, the State Command Chief Master Sergeant of California, Chief Master Sergeant Cindy Downing. Ladies and gentlemen, the formal portion of the induction ceremony is now concluded. Color Guard Commander. Sir, Color Guard Commander reports. Color Guard Commander, job well done, and you are dismissed. Sir, it was our, our honor. I would like to express my personal appreciation to tonight's Color Guard and Honor Cordon. It was comprised of the Air National Guard, Honor Guard members from throughout the United States, the District of Columbia, and our three great territories.
General Clark, again, it was a privilege. We're so glad that your family and friends could be here to enjoy it with us tonight. We'd like to have one more round of applause for tonight's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remain standing as General Clark and Mrs. Clark, along with the head table, move to the reception area. Ladies and gentlemen, please join Chief Hotaling in offering heartfelt congratulations to General and Mrs. Clark and their family. We are proud to have been your hosts for this evening's event. Please feel free to take the commemorative wine glass and coin. We thank you for your attendance and wish you good night and a safe passage back to your home stations. <laughs>